Elder Statesman Chief Emmanuel Iwayan is wondering if this Nigeria are founding, if this is the Nigeria that our founding fathers envisioned. Serap says the administration under our president, Buhari, is most corrupt. How come? This is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Kong. We'll find out this and more. Elder Statesman Chief Emmanuel Iwayanwu is concerned that our country is heading towards a state of anarchy. Are his concerns valid? Well, joining me this evening to discuss uh, is Fidel uh, Ayo Ademilui. He is a legal practitioner. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Ayo. It's now, a I, I would, to be here. Yes, I would like to go straight into some of the concerns. There are loads and loads of them. He granted a very long interview, but there are a few things that jumped out to me. He, he started by saying that he's not happy um, with what he's seeing in today's Nigeria. He also went ahead to say, um, make reference to Nigeria's first anthem, the one that was written by the white lady, I don't remember it, but uh, the Nigeria we hail the anthem. And oh, he, sure. Yes, he, he said, um, though tribe and tongue may differ, but mm. in unity we stand. And, and, he, and the question is, are we still that Nigeria? Are we still united? Looking at all of the things that are happening around the country. Well, uh, I think the first thing is that it's not only Chief uh, Emmanuel Mwayawu that is um, concerned or really alarmed about the state of affairs in our country today. Uh, many people are also drawing the same conclusion that uh, Chief Emmanuel Mwayawu is also, is also drawing. But I think, um, just as your question uh, reflects, is that uh, but since independence and now, and some few uh, days to May 29, where another new government will emerge in Nigeria, mm -hmm. can we truly boast of uh, the funding, the realization, or even getting close to the realization of the dream or the founding uh, fathers of uh, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But really, the answer lies in the fact that uh, institutionally, uh, the foundation of Nigeria itself is warped. And you can't, for, for we lawyers, we used to say, you can't put something or nothing. You have a new colonial economy, an economy that still depends largely on a uh, big. Uh, 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 and advanced uh, countries mm -hmm. for almost everything, up to toothpicks. There's no production going on mm -hmm. and all of that. But the major question is this, is that what hope do working people have be, be, uh, by May 29 and after? And uh, the answer is almost bleak. It's as if there is a climate of hopelessness uh -huh. and, uh, and gale of... Uh, of uh, despair in time. And that's not a good thing to, you know, to look at. But, but let's go back to um, Chifiwayo's message. He also made reference to the beginning. He said mm -hmm. that we all knew from the beginning that we were different races and different tribes. Uh, we all knew we had different religions, but we resolved to stand in unity. And indeed, our founder, founding fathers did very well. It appeared, according to him, to me, the best government we had was that government of 1960 because, he says, at that time there was no question of Nigerians killing Nigerians. Um, there was no problem with headsmen and farmers, no clashes, there was no kidnapping. He's literally saying maybe that must have been the best government uh, we I, had. I, did I, they take, a, they, did they, I mean, because he's saying they didn't take advantage of how divided we were, hmm. but then we, we made a resolve. Whatever happened to that resolve that we made? Well, I want to disagree with that uh, position of uh, Chief uh, Manu Nwayawu. I don't think the peoples of Nigeria who made up Nigeria of today, or as of, as of then, went into a voluntary and mutual agreement mm -hmm. to, be the, uh, to be in that uh, federation. Nigeria itself is a creation of, if you remember, British colonialism. Of course it was just the battle for uh, territories between the European powers. Ordinarily, southern Cameroon was part of what used to be regarded as Nigeria today. And it was when it was ceded to France, French imperialism mm -hmm. that uh, you know we were back to where we are. So Nigeria itself 
it's not a creation, it's not a voluntary creation of all the nationalities that are now locked up in the prison house of, uh, of uh, uh, British and lately American imperialism that we now call Nigeria and all of that. So at no time have we entered into that mushua and a dispassionate discussion. But we have agreed to stay together. We have been At here for a hundred years. We celebrated no, no. centenary. They were, some time we were ago. lump up together. Yes, but At no if, time we, have we, if discussed we did that. not want to stay together, mm. we would have left long time ago. There have been several countries now, to, 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 who have divided to, 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 to themselves. I disagree up. with the premises of uh, uh, Chief uh, Manuel Wayawu. The assertion that the 1960s were the best phase. Of, 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 of times in Nigeria is another uh, fallacy, if I may add. In the sense that the 1960s, the, in themselves, opened up a period of um, you know the debate about the national question. I remember the the 90, Nigerian 1596 coup that culminated uh, eventually in that bloody uh, civil war. So, in itself, it was a period of heightened ethnic tensions. But just to add. One must also concede to the fact that the nationalist leaders of that era, uh, Chief Abayo and Olowo in the Western region, uh, Dr. Olamdi Azikwe of mm -hmm. uh, the Eastern region, uh, who was arguably called the Zik of Africa, and then uh, uh, at the time the Governor General of Nigeria, and then the President of Nigeria subsequently, then the Amadou Bello and uh, Shiasa Amadou Bello and uh, uh, the, the, the Sardana Tafa Balewa. And then mm -hmm. Tafawa Balewa, who was the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, you must consider the fact that, as limited, uh, within the limitations we have scientifically observed about that era, there were people who want to put Nigeria, uh, even on the basis of independence, on the pedestal of all the other advanced countries. That's why, as of 1959, when some European countries have not even had television, pioneer television in West Africa. Mm -hmm. As early as 1959, free education in vast rural and agrarian uh, parts of Nigeria were being opened up. So and you, then, you mm, somewhat seem to me, I'm sorry, but you seem like you're speaking from both sides of your mouth. As no, much I'm as you just, disagree, no, I know. But a, if, if we had these kind of things being prioritized over mm, tribalism and religion and... No, it was a, tribalism was still going on. Yes, if you but, remember. But it was... But the good I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to be scientific and <laughs> be balanced. Okay. You know, in this, I'm not being contradictory at all. I'm trying to say that despite that climate of tribalism, that's a climate of uh, journalism and, uh, if you ask me, uh, clannish uh, interest. If you remember, it was the alliance of the uh, UN, U, UNDP, I mean, that's the UDP, that's the party of uh, 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 Dr. Adadoka, Dr. Kintola, that merged with the, uh, Cent the Northern um, People's Congress that merged into that uh, Grand Alliance that in a way there was that attempt to capture power by ethnic and tribal and uh, tribal means. Mm -hmm. The nineteen sixty five general elections was a, ended in a bloody skirmish. Mm -hmm. And the outcome was the January 15, 1966 coup. Then three months later there was the uh, programs in the north and then down the line the civil war broke out and then three years of carnage. Let's take so, it that let's take it that at the time we were still trying to understand, you know, the the workings of becoming a country since, you know, like most people say, and you have also alluded to the fact that we were all just lumped together. So we're still trying to understand how to live together and cohabit and enjoy, you know, nationalism as it was at the time. But this is 60 years down the line. Mm. And in our, out of that 60 years, we have had democracy back to back. Mm. And we still instead of growing and becoming better, we are almost back because what you're describing is almost the same thing that happened in 1960. So can we really say that we are a progressive society or maybe we're retrogressing? Re really, we need, to, we need to be clear about how human societies develop. Human societies don't develop on the basis of uh, major of boundaries or mm -hmm. territories. Human society develop on the basis of how they manage their resources and what is available at every point in history. But that to, also falls at the, at the feet of no, government. I'm, co I'm coming, I'm going somewhere. In the sense that <clears throat> at the period when uh, the independence movement broke out in Nigeria, it was a period when uh, at that time there was more or less 
uh, the reality, in fact, fundamentally, the reality that the, 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 the country, not only the country, and even at that time, the global economy was stratified into two. Mm -hmm. there, were, uh, there was the school of thought that believed that we can plan society, we can put resources, we can, we can even uh, centrally share resources society. Though it was a, 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 a battered example of that, whatever. And that was also happening in the Soviet Union, which was more or less, uh, a, 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 if you ask me, a, a, a pseudo a pseudo socialist attempt of trying to reform society on the basis of sharing resources collectively. Mm -hmm. The other side of the divide was at another time the booming British imperialism, uh, which was also like a signpost of countries who want to enter into liberal economy and, and things like that. I remember that was just shortly after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So it was a period when humanity was debating how to how societies can be managed. You see, on the basis of free trade or on the basis of central planning. Mm -hmm. So it was another pedestal that Nigeria, I mean, a, a, a fictitious, that's, that's the way it's it is. your opinion. Uh, a fictitious creation of Euro American imperialism, as we have it, came into being as an independent something. So that it, the nationalists at that time wanted to also be develop Nigeria either consciously or consciously into, if, if at all, a form of uh, economy that plans society. And that is why we have a lot of investment, state investment in education, in healthcare and all that. But uh, just 30 years after that, uh, the, 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 which, the parallel uh, economic example, which was a, a first one, the one happening, you know, the, the Cold War era that ended in 1989. So the world flattened, so to speak, and everybody was like this, what we call the neoliberal stage of a global economy, in which people want, everything now is for sale. In fact, a liver is for sale, blood is for sale, <laughs> and even all the talk of education and healthcare. In places like US, there was a recent um, news of a, a mother that sold his baby. You know, for an advanced capitalist economy, that is that should be something that is far, far should it's not on the news. But we will hear about that in um, in our own side of the world here, in, uh, where we have if you enter, uh, if you read page three of Punch, you see how your mother sold his child for three hundred thousand. It's happening in advanced capitalist countries. We have entered global economy and um, and humanity, unfortunately, has entered into the twilight period of the liberal uh, uh, disorder. So where do we go from here? How can we resolve this very complicated social political uh, uh, situation we find ourselves? Mm -hmm. Unless and until we democratically determine whether we want to coexist as, as a voluntary and democratic entity and the democratization of resources. For instance, 1%, according to the World Bank, of Nigeria's, economy, of Nigeria's economic demographic population control 90% of the oil wealth. You know, remember that we are a mono yes. economic yes. Uh, entity, controls that resources. We have less than 26% being invested in education. We have over 32% in unemployment. Nigeria is just the widest so there's space a, so, so for there's nulibra, a for nulibra disorder in the so entire world. So there's a death for, for prioritizing Nigerians and what should benefit us. Um, so we have more of, um, you know, I don't want to call them oligarchs, but we have people who literally um, have all the resources in their hands and they're just a percentage of people uh, and the rest uh, of us are suffering. Uh, Let's talk about the constitution and how it plays a role in this because um, Chief Iwayo also said that we have a constitution um, which our, uh, our, our country, uh, our, well, he says the strategy of our constitution does not work. This is what he says. Um, and he says, we need to change it. So, yes, our constitution starts with we the people. Mm. And I always ask the question, which of the we the people, people yeah. is the constitution talking about? Because we have so many laws, and those laws don't necessarily translate into the interest of the average Nigerian on the street. Yeah. Because the people who make these laws today mm. make it to suit them. For example, classic mm. example, Baltry State. Mm. In one day, a law passed first and second and third reading mm. saying, do not look into 
looted government funds and mm. do not investigate any political office mm. holder. And my question is, how does this translate to benefiting the average Balchi citizen? Well, I, I think it still flows further from the premises I've laid before, that there was no time we democratically decided to be together. Now, if you look at the extant constitution of the Federal Bureau of Nigeria, which is the constitution of the Federal Bureau of Nigeria, 1999 has amended. To me, it's the most unconstitutional constitution. That's what we call the, what some of us who belong to a school of thought in constitutional and law regard as the most the constitutionalism of the Nigerian constitution. In the sense that, as you have said, the we the people, it was there was no time the people uh, emerge or converge to say we have entered into 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 this. Now, 20 years down the line, 1999 to 2019, we have seen that. That uh, uh, legacy imposed on us by the military altruists who felt that they can do us good without even consulting us and has become a, a, a hotbed of crisis. Now, the, that constitution itself was more, was more or less a decree. It was decree number 24 of 1999. And it had an adoption clause that it is so adopted as by May 29, 1999, as the, the, the Constitution of But then Nigeria. he had been amended. Now, 20 years, though, of course, there are all those superficial, uh, if you ask me, superficial amendments to the, to the Constitution. But there has not been, a, a, in itself, a constitutional reworking. Because, first and foremost, what is very clear now is that 20 years down the line, there must be a fundamental uh, attempt to uh, have a new constitution altogether. But the question is, why now, Why do we have to wait for 20 years? I mean, no, I mean keep, it's not 20 years, 2019. Well, we keep making, I've, I've heard several times where we say, oh, we're going to have a constitutional conference or an amendment. And we had something that I did not really understand, the National Confab, which, you know, was tossed in the bin because a certain person did not attend and felt that it wasn't, you know, reasonable. Why have we kept quiet for this long? And you are, are an officer of the law. Why has the NBA or lawyers not been pushing for this? Because in other climes, I hear that lawyers and civil society push for these things, push for it to, they lobby for these things to be brought as bills on the floor of the National Assembly. But we don't do that. We only criticize these things on the sidelines. Well, well, well I, I, I want to disagree with you that maybe the members of the legal community uh, have not been pushing for it. But some of us on this side of the divide, we have been pushing for it. Now, the, the fact that maybe within that 20 year bracket, most of our agitations have not been adopted mm -hmm. does not mean that events will not finally come our way. In fact, the emergence of what we call the Magna Carta in Britain was more than 100 years of agitation. No matter how long it may take, uh, human uh, consciousness wants liberty, mm -hmm. wants freedom. It will definitely come. Mm -hmm. Now, the, what, the, if you look at we, what we are asking, what we are pushing for, is not just a constitutional reform, as I said, jamboree conferences and other things. First and foremost is that now a new National Assembly will be constituted after May 29. That National Assembly must set about the task of convening what we can call a joint uh, National Assembly to State House Assembly Constitutional uh, Reform Committee that will set about now taking memoranda from each state. They don't need to have a jamboree conference. Who's going them. to put them up to this? And it still goes back to my question. Exactly. They have to, but who's going to put them up to it? Who's going to make sure that they follow through and make it happen? Well, we are going to be pushing for that. Of course, for for, for, for those of us in the Nigeria Bar Association, particularly the Lekki Forum, we already have that in the agenda, that we are going to be pushing for a, a, a movement for a people's constitution. A constitution that we are in number one, there will be a voluntary uh, right to uh, the question of self-determination, because we want to determine whether we want to coexist or not. If people want to go, let them go. There is nothing, it's not a prison house, you understand? But not self-determination with the right of referendum as to how they want, they want to determine their resources and all of that. Number two is the question of the justiciability of the fundamental directives and state, principle, uh, state uh, policy of state uh, policy, mm -hmm. which is chapter two of the Constitution. Now, it must there is no talk about. There is, they must end this issue of it is not justiciable 
we must be able to just, just uh, to take justiciable, justiciable actions. That is, litigate on right to education. Now, right to health, which are social uh, and economic uh, and economic uh, rights. Then number three is the issue of uh, the question of how we want to run our our economy. Mm -hmm. Now. There is a provision in that. In we the have 30 seconds. Uh, Let's well, just make that in, short. In the, cons in the constitution that is not made justiciable, the justiciability of the policy of the control of the commanders of the economy of Nigeria by the people themselves. Hmm. What that means is that we would democratically determine whether or not some multinationals want to continue to control our way, our highways when we can maximize our vast economy uh, to build uh, hundreds of universities take people off the streets, open up textile factories, and uh, move away from that um, index we have been regarded as the world poorest uh, country. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, um, Ayo Ademilui, legal yeah. practitioner, for speaking with us. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, Serap is saying that apparently corruption might increase in the country in the coming years. And one would be wondering why, because this government is all about zero tolerance for corruption. We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us.